G'day guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now today, I'm going to be predicting the 2022 AFL Top 8 in order. Before we get into this video, if you're new to the channel, it would be amazing if you could hit the subscribe button. We're trying to grow the army as big as we can. Without wasting any more time, let's get in to my top eight of 2022. I'm going to break down my top four that I did in my season predictions and elaborate on that a little bit more. I picked the Lions to come first. I didn't want to pick the Ds because I know how hard it is to finish first. Like we did it with the last kick of the season last year. And I just feel like finishing first twice in a row isn't very common. So I had the Ds in second. I had the Lions in the pole position. I just feel like they're, they're almost ready. They've been bubbling away at the surface for a couple of years now, and I just feel like it's next step o'clock for the Lions. They went from finishing like 17th, shooting all the way up to second in the space of 12 months a few years ago, and now they've sort of plateaued a little bit in and around that top four, which I don't know whether you could call that plateauing or not. So I just feel it's time for them to take the next step. Cam Rain is back. They've kept Lockie Neal. Joe Danaher's now gonna have a second season under his belt, feeling nice and fit. They made the top four. So I just feel like it's time for the Lions to take that next step. I've got the Ds in second. I'm, it's more hopeful than anything. Like who knows what could happen. I, I just think the Ds age demographic is super, super exciting. And it gives us every chance to do similar things to what we did last year. But I'm just aware that you can't take anything for granted. And in football, because you have a good win one week, it means nothing the next. So I'm well aware that it's not a foregone conclusion and it's something that they're gonna have to play a better brand than they did last year to do what they did last year. I've got the dogs in third. There's still a couple of question marks for me. They seem to play well as a team when it's on their terms. Like when the Bulldogs are playing their champagne football, it's very, very hard to stop. But when the doggies are sort of on the back foot a little bit, uh, we saw in a couple of games last year that when the going gets tough, uh, they can sometimes fold. So if they tighten up all that, it feels like they are poised for a real shout. And it's probably their best crack at it this year. Joshy Bruce is a huge loss, similar to Eric Hipwood. And then Sam Darcy is now out for the start of the season. So it might be Jamara Hagen o'clock. The number one draft pick from a couple of years ago. Superstar in the making. It could be time to unleash him in his second season. I've made a change since my season predictions for fourth place. I had Sydney fourth. I've had a little bit of a think about it and I think the power will finish in the top four. I think it was a little bit silly for me to put the Swans in. I sort of thought they could nudge their way up to a top four spot, but looking at how young some of their team is, I think that's probably a little bit of a stretch. So I've gone the power for the fourth position. I still don't think they're the benchmark and I don't see them as a team yet that can really damage you in finals. They feel like that sort of team that'll win enough games at Adelaide Oval, get to finals and it it, it might just be a, another wasted opportunity. And I feel like I'm going to think that until they prove me wrong. So like even if they make another top four and sort of crash and burn again, Going into next season, I'm still probably going to have that preconceived idea that they'll be all talk until they walk the walk, but it would be exciting for the power to walk the walk. I'd love to see the power deep in finals, and I think they're going to give themselves the best chance again, so I've put them in fourth, and I think the Lions and the power in a qualifying final would be unbelievable scenes here at the G. In fifth, I have gone the Geelong Cats. Anytime I've ever written that football side off, They've just made grand finals and <laughs> nearly won grand finals. So I physically can't do it. I can't write them off until it's round 23 and they're physically not in finals. So for me, I'm gonna have to put them in and around the top four. I don't think they're good enough for the top four. Even, even last year, they almost finished first. When the final siren went at the end of round 23, the Cats were the minor premiers, unbelievable. But even when that happened, I'm still sort of going, oh well, I don't know, there's something missing for me with the Cats and maybe they'll come out and 
prove us all wrong, but I see them sliding slightly. From third, I'm putting the Cats down in fifth, but still a really dangerous side. If you get the Cats in the second week of the finals, you could be in all sorts with their maturity and their experience. So the Cats in fifth for mine. In sixth, I said it in the season predictions, and I'm gonna back it in here. I reckon Carlton will hop up into the top eight, and I reckon they'll finish sixth. It all comes down to me if they glue together as a team. I started thinking about your Adam Cheras and your George Hewitts and your Sards and your Zachy Williams all being introduced in the last couple of years. That is great talent and that creates great depth. So I started thinking about the depth of the footy club and it really excited me. And the more I thought about the depth and their maturity, I was thinking maybe it is time for the Blues to go that next level. Over the preseason, I saw a real connected group when they all shaved their heads for Sam Doherty. Michael Voss seems to have done great stuff over at Port Adelaide, a midfield driven coach. He's tasted success before. I've been pessimistic before on the second round coaches, like the coaches that get their second chances. But I don't know, there's something different about Vossi. So I could be sucked in to the Carlton facade and if I am, I will accept it. But for some reason, I'm on. I'm on board. I reckon the Blues will finish sixth and host a home final. It started getting really tough for me once I got into seventh position. I initially had a couple of teams in that position who are now not in the position. So I've gone in seventh place, I've gone the Tigers. And I think it was just out of the respect of their last few years that I put them in seventh. But I was still finding it hard to put the Tigers in seventh. To give away some clues of my bottom eight, I had Essendon, St. Kilda, and GWS probably having a better year than Richmond. But then I thought to myself, well, they're not gonna finish 12th again. Uh, that would be ludicrous. So I am anticipating a jump back up from the Tigers, but I don't think it's gonna be a jump into a contender category. I think they're in this real in-between period and it's gonna be interesting. But just out of respect, I had the Tigers in seventh. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine Carlton and Richmond at the MCG elimination final, packed, packed MCG in the first week of finals. We haven't seen finals at the G for three years now. So that would be fever pitch scenes. And in eighth position, I thought it would have looked a little bit silly for me to have the Swans in fourth in my season predictions, but then not in the top eight in my top eight predictions. So, so the Swannies, I predicted for them to not make the top four, but I've got them in eighth. I think they will slide in, but golly, golly, gosh, Saints, Essendon, GWS, Freo. I, I almost couldn't pick between those five teams to finish eighth. Like it was, it was very, very difficult. I've played it safe and gone with the Swans because they made it last year, but it was an extremely hard exercise. All right, guys, that is it for my top eight predictions video. If you liked this and you want to see the remainder of the ladder, comment down below and I will consider doing some more content on the ladder. I really appreciate the support in the last few videos. I really appreciate everyone getting around the content and I'll see you all very, very soon for some more videos. Cheers, guys.